prison wall around it. Therefore, you no longer live in a home, but you live in a prison yard built by yourself for yourself. But even within your prison yard, you will let in people that will destroy you. Because when you take in a young person, when you have a graduate who is pleading to work in your house as a helper, because he'd rather be where he can eat three square meals, then we have a problem. When people are underutilized, then there's agitation. When young people are not engaged, then there's trouble. Yet, we have a lot of brilliant, I have encountered some of the smartest young people you can imagine in this country. Many smart young people that do not come from any big family. They're young, simple people. But where they have the opportunity to apply themselves and to be given the right kind of knowledge, they come out with incredible things. When you look in the tech space, young Nigerians are doing incredible things. And those are areas where we can catch up with the rest of the world as we equip and we empower people. It's not about your children. It's not about my children. It's about the children of Nigeria. It's about understanding that it doesn't matter how much our own children have. If the other children in the country are not taken care of, our children will not survive. Because that's it, the reality. When they go out, you and I will be afraid every day. Why? Because there's some other children that are hungry. And when people are hungry and they're desperate, they will do some things that they should not do. And we can already see some of the signs. The agitations. I remember when I, I, I did my youth service in Kano. And when I served in Kano, this was 1988, there were the, the Almanjiri boys were all over the place. I wasn't used to it. It was very strange to me. When I'm walking to my house from work, you would see all these children. My heart just wouldn't take it. So when we were asked to write a project, that was my project. It was about getting corporate organizations to adopt them and find a way to give them an opportunity in order to take them off the street. But at the end of the day, that was a problem that remained with Nigeria. Now we can see. It took many decades, but it became a thorn in our flesh. Because now, try to imagine how much we have spent and how much it will still cost us to try to eradicate the Boko Haram issue. But Boko Haram didn't need to look for an army. He had a ready army. He had a ready army of disenfranchised young people that had been taught nothing. Kids that were thrown to the street. If you offered them food and accommodation alone, they would kill for you. But don't think it's just the Almanjiri kids. There are kids in your neighborhoods and mine that as a matter of deliberate policy as a nation, we must map out how we want to deal with this issue. Education is key. With that education must be the right kind of skills that facilitates opportunities. Creating an environment that empowers and allows people to express themselves. We will not get there in a year. We won't get there in two years. It will not be overnight, but we can at least start. I know that we've started many things. The challenge is the numbers are not waiting for us. There's still women giving birth to seven, eight children. The rate of growth of our population is scary. But whether we like it or not, they are citizens of our nation. And as a people, we have a responsibility. We do not have a social welfare system. I always say to my foreign friends, all we do, we do is based on the family. It's based on you and I'm paying for my cousin, my brother's daughter, my cousin's daughter, my uncle's niece, my second, third, fourth uncle, cousin that needs help. So at the end of the day, one rich man in the middle of a thousand poor people is what? So we're all poor, really. We are all poor because when you measure the level of responsibility that you have based on the fact that everyone is not empowered, even you cannot fully benefit from what you think is the, uh, uh, is the fruit of your hard work.
So restructuring our system to be more equitable, being deliberate about facilitating opportunity for a young and able generation, empowering them with enterprise knowledge. Why? It is absolutely critical that we create businesses in order to create jobs. Government cannot, what does government employ? About two million people. There are many people in Nigeria where almost 200 million. All the big businesses that you see, how many people do they really employ? I'm chairman of First Bank. We're the largest bank and we employ the most by far. The new generation banks are far more efficient in their approach to labor. We have a legacy. We're cleaning up because we don't have a choice, which means even we have to make our workforce efficient and reduce numbers. The stock exchange represents a major portion of Nigeria's economy, but how many people are employed by the companies on the stock exchange? I sit on the board of one company that in one day, they installed a new machinery line that took out 460 something jobs. Can you blame a company for efficiency, for seeking efficiency in the day of competition and technology? No. Is that going to change? Absolutely not. Companies will continue to become more efficient. What do we need to do? We need to retrain our people for new generation jobs. There are jobs that are available now that didn't exist five or ten years ago. There are new jobs. There are some jobs that exist now that will be outdated in the next five years. There, are, there is a push for artificial intelligence and so much technology to take the place of men. We haven't even solved the problem of engaging men. This is not to scare you. This is to challenge us. This is to understand that every young person that needs to be empowered needs to be empowered. This is to understand that we need every single one of us adding value productively to the nation. This is to say that we need to increase the productivity of this nation, but in an efficient way that is socially responsible, accommodates our people, but provides for our future generation. We have a challenge. The young people, there are many of them striving, and they are trying and pushing in the face of sometimes very little. Let's be honest. But we have a responsibility, not just for them, but for us. Because I, I don't know how old you are, but at least you have so many years to still live in Nigeria. Maybe some people have another country. I don't. I only have one passport and it's green. And I will never apologize for it. But I want to be very proud of it. I want the nation that I know has so much within it, that God has blessed with so much resources, that has a lot of talents inherent in that youthful population. I want it to strategically unleash the talents and the skills of that generation for the benefit of this nation so that we can all be at rest and we can be at peace so that our communities can be safe again, so that our cities can work, so that the opportunities that are created by them can engage some other young people as well. When I started business, I was 25. Now I'm 55. January uh, 2019 will be 30 years that I've been in business. But I was young like them. The environment was not at its best, but I still had the opportunity to create something within it. For some young people now, even finding that space, because of the competition, the sheer numbers, Nigeria was what? 130 million, 140 million. We're closer to 200 million now, which means that the number of people chasing one Naira has increased. The number of people chasing one opportunity. When we look for people to employ, have you Ask your people to employ 14 people and 140,000 people apply. Where do you start from? How do you find the real people within there? 
So a lot of people will be out of work, not because they're not capable, but because there's too much competition for a limited opportunity. But we need every one of them to deploy their talents for our country to be where we want it to be. And for your old age and mine to be secured. We don't want to run out of our country. I don't want to look around me and say, oh, I can only have peace if I live abroad. No, I like being in Nigeria. I like Ewe Dua Namala. <laughs> I like to see my own people. It gives me a lot of joy. And we have, you know what's funny about Nigeria? The rest of Africa is waiting for us to become. They tell you all the time. A lot of my African friends say, you know, we can't afford Nigeria not to work. They, they have such high hopes that we will work because we are the example. When you're 25% of a continent, you better work. Please, let's make it work. Let's understand that wherever you are, whatever position you occupy, whatever opportunity you have, to influence things in order to create value for this nation by strategically empowering that huge population that is an energetic population that can deploy their energy for growth of this nation. There are two key areas to us increasing our productivity as a nation, women and our youth. That's it, women and our youth. Why? If you have a double engine plane and you fly it with one plane, you're undermining the ability of that plane to deploy full capacity. Why do you want to keep women from fully deploying their talents when you need every one of us deploying our talents in order for the country to maximally perform? Why are we going to keep the largest portion of our population which is made up of youths right now, from maximally deploying. What does that mean? We will always be inefficient, because only a few. Do you know that as of today, only 100 BVNs in Nigeria, only 100 BVNs in Nigeria account for over 60% of lending? Yeah. Why? I leave that with you as a question. I just want you to remember, you love your children. They will live in a world after you. And that world and that society they will live in will consist of other young people that are the young people of Nigeria. Except we take care of all of them, you cannot go to bed and rest knowing that your children will do well. Thank you very much. Have a great day.